All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Um, it's always fun to kind of get together online with a bunch of strangers, I guess, <laughs> really. Um, but so today we are going to be talking about Edelweiss Plus and kind of from the point of view of um, really bloggers and reviewers and end users like that. So this is the description of the webinar today. And um, basic, like a nice and simple introduction into really how to, you know, find books to read and, and do some stuff with them. Uh, just to give a really quick bit of background about who we are, uh, we are Above the Tree Line, that's uh, the name of our company. Um, we actually get a fair number of phone calls for tree trimming services, but that is not what we do. Uh, we're, we work with the book industry to uh, it's kind of streamline a lot of those uh, functions that um, people kind of struggle with sometimes. Uh, we are based in Ann Arbor, Michigan. This is actually a picture of our office um, above a brew pub, which is horrible, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, but essentially, uh, Edelweiss is used around the book industry by librarians, booksellers, reviewers like yourselves, and publishers. Um, for a lot of functions. Uh, we'll kind of get into a lot of that, of course, once we hop onto the site and um, kind of start showing you around. But essentially, you know, it's title discovery and there's a lot of um, ordering and communication sort of stuff happening as well. Uh, it's simply, uh, you know, booksellers and librarians and sales reps can communicate with each other and, and all that kind of fun stuff. And we have a lot of analytics and community and uh, marketing stuff in here as well. Uh, Edelweiss is used by all the major publishers. We actually um, counted <laughs> one time and uh, Edelweiss does account for 95% of all the front list titles um, put out every year, which is most of them. Obviously, 95% is most. Um, but uh, just kind of a, a nice way to go to kind of see a one-stop clearing house of you know what's coming out essentially you know this is where people go to to see what's coming up um, today for the demo we are going to be um, touring Edelweiss plus we're going to show you the dashboard just kind of the uh, like the springboard onto the rest of the site and you, know, you can make it look however you want so we're really going to be discussing uh, customization of the dashboard mostly and then using save filters which is a nice um, really powerful tool that you can use throughout the site. Then we'll dive into using digital review copies and requesting them and downloading them and, and that sort of thing. And then reviews, shelves, and buzz, which all kind of feed into each other. And then just touching on the community and uh, some affiliation stuff. Um, we do have somebody, uh, my colleague Lachlan is on the line. He's going to be able to answer questions for you guys. Uh, there's enough people that we can't just have people shouting into the microphone or into their phones to um, ask questions uh, without completely derailing the webinar for everybody else. So uh, we do, the webinar tools do have um, some Q&A or questions uh, link there. So if you do have a question, feel free to ask there. Or of course, you can always email us at support at above the tree line .com and we'll answer uh, any of your questions there. Uh, sometimes you will get an email after a webinar saying you didn't answer my question about how why I'm not seeing a particular title I'm like well I'm not going to cover that in a webinar um, so, so especially for those very specific questions uh, you do want to contact us at support and then of course we do have a lot of help documentation if you go to help.adelweiss.plus you'll see a whole plethora of offerings there that should cover uh, pretty much anything you want to do on the site so again, thanks for joining us this afternoon, and we are going to dive into the webinar itself. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I'm smoother than other times. Um, so this is Adelice Plus. If chances are you've seen the site already, uh, if not, um, if you just simply go to Adelice.plus, you'll see a link to register for the site. Um, to do, you know, digital review copies and all that kind of stuff, you do need to have an account, um, which, of course, I think makes sense. 
but really what we're looking at here is that dashboard. So uh, one thing that I, I really want to stress, and I, I mentioned it a little bit um, in the beginning intro there, that there is a lot of you know ordering and catalogs and you know, communication with sales reps and stuff like that that does happen on the site for especially for booksellers and librarians. Um, if you're a blogger or a reviewer, you don't you don't need that stuff. Um, so we've made this really customizable so that you can actually come in and, and hide those things and really kind of essentially just see what you want to see uh, really in the order that you want to see it. Uh, so the easiest way to do that is to actually come up here and click into the tools, which is the site-wide preferences. So the first thing here is the dashboard and you can set these dashboard preferences. So I'm actually going to hide quite a bit of this um, for this webinar just to kind of show you what it can look like. Um, I like review copies on top and we are going to hide the catalogs and orders and event grids and those other things can stay. I think that's a good order. So then when you click save there, it actually just reconfigures your dashboard for you. I want to point out too, if you click into help, you'll see the Edelweiss Plus Setup Wizard, uh, which is a way for you to uh, kind of answer some questions that will set up your uh, dashboard to look how you will most likely want it to look. So you can have a little bit of help that way as well. Um, but for the most part, you can do it yourself too very easily. Uh, there are a couple other things here in the tools. Um, one of them, the colors. Uh, you, you can have the font be as, as light or as, as dark as you like. Um, and you can have, you know, blue instead of orange and, and that sort of stuff. I happen to like orange. I know some people have a this kind of odd visceral reaction to the color orange. It's like a morally defunct color or something. <laughs> so you can change that to blue or gray if you like. So basically what we have set up here now is my review copies, some buzz, some reviews, the, um, some friends of mine, which in this case, in this account is just me. Um, and then some people and shelves and that sort of stuff. So really um, a little bit more svelte than it was originally. Uh, chances are, you know, I actually think there is a lot of benefit to you, even if you are just, you know, kind of just looking for free books, frankly. Uh, there's a lot of benefit to actually seeing the catalogs and, you know, seeing what Knopf is, is bringing out next spring and that sort of stuff. It's just, again, just a nice way to know um, what is coming out. And I just saw this book and she is awesome. So I'm excited about that. So because I just saw this, <laughs> I'm going to show you real quick how to add a book to a shelf. Um, so the shelf icon is, is this little guy here. And I'm going to put that in highly anticipating. I got to meet this lady once. She's really very nice and she has the same name as my daughter. So that's awesome. Um, anyways, <laughs> so that's how you add a book to a shelf. And we'll do a little bit more of that here in just a minute. Uh, I do want to point out as well, there's this My Edelweiss uh, section here too that is always going to be up at the top. So this is where you can see uh, you'll have some review copy approvals and um, dec you know some declined and all that kind of stuff too. So I can see that back in June, uh, Velo Press approved uh, Run Strong, Stay Hungry. And so I can go just click here to go to that title and download it. I can also see that somebody declined to review copy requests of mine as well. And if you've already seen this, uh, you can go ahead and just click the check mark here and it marks it as red. So it actually is going to remove it from your uh, notifications here. So I don't have to see that horrible, heartbreaking decline anymore. So that's, that's pretty fun. The, uh, you also can see, you know, a list of publishers here. So whenever you do click into a publisher, for example, if we go to HarperCollins, whenever you click in there, you're going to see their catalogs. And a lot of those catalogs are going to be sorted into 
different folders and stuff like that. And now different publishers are going to classify or organize their catalogs on really just how they see fit. Sometimes it makes more sense than others. But, <laughs> uh, that's prerogative on their end. Um, so you can't actually see, you know, current mass market catalogs or their featured catalogs are really going to be their um, their most recent catalogs that they're selling right now. Uh, so right now, basically the winter uh, 2018, which is basically January on, um, titles are, are being offered. So whenever we do click into, you know, if you want to go to review copies, you can, if you want to, you can click here, which is the a view as list icon, or you can click the link up at the top of the page. It's really up to you. Um, but, and you can also grab each of these dashboard lanes and drag them around like so, if you like, and just kind of move, move them around the, the site that way, or the page at least. And also I should uh, mention here within the MyAdalice um, section here, you can click on to this guy and you can go ahead and um, remove some of these elements that you don't necessarily want to see. Or if, if it's stuff that you don't use, it's not going to really pop up in here anyways. Um, but you can hide stuff there if you like. All right, so that's the dashboard. Kind of nice and easy, really. It's, uh, I think, once you uh, get the goals of what's, what we're going after here. It's, it's pretty simple to wrap your mind around. Uh, I should point out um, that within each of these sections, uh, there are different options. So right now we're looking at available review copies that have been added in the last three months, uh, which is 1,300. Uh, I can, if I wanted to, I could just see titles that I can just go ahead and download right now. Or I can, you know, see my request that I made, and um, you know, any titles that I've downloaded, and and also those titles that I've downloaded but haven't reviewed, uh, which is kind of a nice thing. You can kind of see, you know, the work that you have to do. Uh, but you can see that in each of these. It's worth pointing out here as well that there is, uh, if you click on the calendar icon there, you can extend or contract this time frame. So if you if you come onto the site a lot, you know, like weekly or, or something like that. You can come in here and just show me the titles that were added in the last week that I maybe haven't seen yet. All right, so I do want to point out to the, uh, the next thing, the next section is the saved filters. So this is kind of a nice way to kind of customize the site a little bit more even. Um, kind of unlimited potential here. The only limit is your imagination. <laughs> um, so basically when you come in here, if, if you don't have any save filters yet, this part here is going to be blank, um, but you can just go ahead and at, click add a new filter. And from here you have a lot of different options. So you can see there's some links to help here. Um, but you can, you know, for example, so this is Edelweiss vendor, so that's going to be those uh, larger umbrella uh, publishers like, you know, Random House, uh, for example, who actually uh, makes up a bunch of imprints like Crown and Knopf and uh, Bantam and all those. So um, you can, you know, just filter for HarperCollins titles, for example, if you like, or you can set a filter for publication date or subject. Subject is actually the most common one that people use, so we're going to do one of those here. Uh, so whenever we scroll through here, so the, the subjects that are shown here are actually um, BISAC um, subjects. So it's the classification of titles that the publishers actually use. And since the publishers are the ones who are adding titles to the site, kind of makes sense to do that. Uh, so for example, if you are looking for uh, genre fiction, then you would come in here and if you see fiction, you can click on the down arrow to look at for the genre stuff. And we can see you know, if we like fantasy titles, we only want to see dark fantasy because we're broken inside. Just kidding. <laughs> um, 
So we, we have a, a filter here that's only going to show us the dark fantasy titles that are on the site. And so all you need to do to save this is to name it and then save it. So now we have a, a new save filter here. It's going to show us 279 titles that are available all throughout the site. Um, if we want to monkey with that a little bit, you can come up here and click edit filter and you can add things to this filter. So whenever you add something to it, it's going to actually update your, um, your saved filter. So, you know, if we only want to see the hardcover titles, we can do that. Um, or, and this, this is one that I actually like quite a bit. It's the publication date. You can actually set a dynamic filter here where, you know, just show me those dark hardcover fantasy titles that are coming out in the next month, which in this case is a very slim one selection, which is nice and easy to scroll through. I'm going to take that hardcover one off there. So what's kind of nice about this is it's always going to be looking out a month. And so if you looked at this in six months, it's it's going to be looking out a month again. So you, it's not, you don't have to go in and um, you know update the publication range and, and that sort of stuff. What's great about that as well is if you go back to your homepage, your My Idle Buy section here will show those save filters. So anytime one of your save fil filters has a hit, uh, it's going to show up here. So I can see those eight dark fantasy tiles and just click through and, and take a look. Oh, this guy writes crazy stuff. There you go. So those are really, really helpful. Um, and again, you know, you can look here in the save filters tool, but you can also apply those save filters all throughout the site. So for example, if you want to just, you know, look at the review copies that fit your uh, paranormal romance filter that you created. There weren't any added in the last seven days, so I'm going to extend this out, say the last six months. Oh, none again. Bam. I might have something funny in there. So I can apply that filter as I like there. Uh, you can actually also apply that filter um, you know, anytime you're looking at a, a catalog, for example, uh, it's just kind of will that filter will follow you throughout the site. And I'm just actually going to hop into a catalog here real quick just to show you what that looks like. Here's the buzz by Penguin. So anytime you're looking at a, a list of titles at all, whether it's a catalog or, or otherwise, you can click the apply, apply saved filter link here and you can choose from uh, all the filters that you created. You just basically just click that and you're good to go. That's going to show zero probably. Or two. And then to remove that filter, you just click there and click on clear filter. So again, those are great. Um, you know, if there's, you have a specific taste that you um, kind of like to stick with and don't really want to see other stuff and get, you know, you just want to sift through all the noise just to see stuff that fits your own um, personality and your own reading taste, and you can totally do that very easily. So with that said, I'm actually going to jump now into the digital review copy stuff. All right, so beyond the save filters, which you can apply, there's also kind of dynamic filters that apply to any list. So um, I can take a look here. So we can scroll through here and, you know, there's a category filters in here, and this is going to apply specifically to the 2,253 titles that are on this list. 
Um, so if you know there are no family and relationships titles in a list, then you're not going to see that as a filter option. So it's only going to show you stuff that's actually usable for the list in question. Uh, so for this case, I can look, you know, if I want to see genre fiction stuff, I can click, oops, sorry, I can click that and then scroll through. There's 105 mystery titles that I could look at and go ahead and request or download. So you can filter on the fly. You can also uh, sort as you see fit. So date added is actually um, probably one of the most useful ones and that's the default as well. And this little guy here, the triangle, is, uh, changes it from uh, ascending to descending and vice versa. Uh, you can also sort by pub date or you, kind of just however you like. What's kind of nice too is you can sort by uh, reviews and shelves, which is some community stuff and the buzz stuff uh, that we're going to get into in just a little bit. Uh, I do want to point out as well, so here there's a, a couple of display options. And so right now I'm looking at the full view, which essentially just kind of extend, extends, <laughs> sorry, it extends the view a little bit. And from here you can click into content and uh, look at comparable titles if you like. Um, should point out to, if you click content here, it's only going to expand the summary and then you can choose to see the contributor bio or not by clicking in there. Or if you click the arrow plus, it'll expand everything. It's kind of nice because this is where publishers sell their titles. You're going to see stuff that you may not see elsewhere, like marketing plans and key selling points and that sort of stuff. So uh, it's kind of nice. Like you can see, you know, this title is slated to be on NPR um, or, you know, reviewed in the, Wall Street Journal and, and that sort of stuff. So uh, kind of interesting insight into how the publishers are marketing a title, which actually kind of tells you a little bit about um, oftentimes, whether fortunately or unfortunately, um, how much exposure that title is going to get and you know whether or not you're going to hear about it really uh, elsewhere. Um, so that's the full display. You, uh, you can also see the two column view. This may be the view that you have now. This is uh, the default view here. And this is really designed to help you just kind of scroll through the list pretty quickly. I personally don't like this view uh, for my, just because I, have, I like more information. Um, but you can get more information just by clicking on the title and you get this little, call it the title modal. Um, but you can see, you know, the contributor bio, key selling points, etc. There's also the grid view, which I think is not my favorite. <laughs> it's for people who prefer to work in DOS, I think. Uh, but again, I, I like the full view. It's kind of gives you a nice full view <laughs> of what's of what's on offer here. All right, so that's you know basically what we're looking at here. Um, there are other actions that you can perform here. You know, for example, if you um, want to send an email, you can add a, a group of titles to an email to send to a friend, or you can you know export to a PDF or something like that. Um, and you'll find a lot of that within these icons as well. There's the share icon, so you can send this particular title and an email to a, a friend. Or hey mom, check this out. Um, I do this with my friends a lot because since I work here, I see titles that are coming out uh, pretty early and say, hey, your favorite author has a, a book coming out next month, you know, and they get all excited and I'm their hero. Yay. Uh, so you, there is a lot of stuff you can do there, uh, but we're going to dive right now into the request and download stuff, which is actually, you'll see that on the sides here. So um, right now we're looking at all available digital review copies. So uh, that means those titles I can download and also those titles I can just request. Uh, if you only want to see those titles you can download, of course you can do that. And then there's no requesting or anything like that. You just click the download link and you're rolling. So obviously I'm going to download the Essential Oils book. 
Uh, so basically a couple different options here you can uh, download in a standard format. I just did air quotes, you didn't see that. Um, that's really the Adobe, Adobe Digital Editions and Blue Fire Reader and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, the other format is for Kindle. And then you can set that as your preferred format, format for future downloads. If you do the Kindle, you come in here and add your Kindle address there. Uh, there is one extra step that you need to do, which is indicated up here. Uh, and under the Manage Your Kindle link within Amazon, you need to add uh, our email address as uh, approved sender. And that is just kindle at above the tree line dot com. So there's that. Um, you know, whatever format you're reading on, whether, you know, iPad or your phone or a, a Kobo or Kindle, um, each one is going to have its own uh, sort of method in, in getting that title to you. Um, but if we go to help, I'm going to click on get help. And if you click into book professionals, which is you, under the digital review copy stuff, you're going to, if you scroll down, you'll see instructions for downloading to uh, various and sundry things. So again, there may be a setup that you need to do for uh, each sort of device, uh, but really it's, it's pretty easy stuff. And once you do it once, then it's pretty automatic after that. So that's easy stuff. So now I'm going to pop into actually requesting a, a digital review copy. All right. So here's one called the blood print. This is a fantasy epic with a pretty cool cover. Uh, so to request this, I actually just come in here and click on request. And then if you've been uh, doing this for a while, then you're going to notice that this is a little bit different. We just introduced a new interface here, uh, kind of which we talked about in the newsletter yesterday, uh, which is actually really just designed to help you uh, present yourself in a more professional and complete way and um, kind of helps the publicists on the other end kind of wade through all of their review requests and stuff. So essentially um, within here you have a couple of things you're showing what you're requesting and who the publisher is and then there's an evaluation purpose. Uh, so you know if you're a buyer at a bookstore then you would click acquisition, um, that sort of stuff, uh, the advocating as well. Uh, in this case I'm just saying reviewing so I'm a reviewer and that's why I'm requesting this title that really, really helps the uh, publicist kind of prioritize stuff on their end and, and that sort of stuff. Um, there is also a profile that is attached to each of your reviews uh, or uh, sorry, to your requests as well. Um, we can click here on the edit icon and see what that is. I'm a blogger at Edelweiss Books and Wigs, so I do review wigs on a regular basis. Um, but I can change my role here. If I'm a consumer or a blogger, et cetera, I can change that in here. Um, but whenever you write your dis the description of your role, you re really just kind of want to say who you are and what you do and who sees that you do it, essentially, like who your audience is. Because really the idea here is that you're going to help the publisher sell this book later on. Like that's the whole purpose for you getting a free book, frankly. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind as you're doing this. Uh, so this is the kind of your overview. Uh, there's also a links page here where you can add your a link to your blog, your Facebook page if it's a public facing page, uh, Twitter, etc. So because I filled out a lot of that stuff, my profile strength is excellent and you can kind of get a, a rundown of, of what you've added to your stuff here. You don't have to have all that stuff. Just keep in mind that the more the more that you have and the more concise uh, that you are with it, the more likely you are to get a, a approval for your request. Uh, but you do have the opportunity here as well to say why you're requesting the title. You don't have to do this, um, but it's it can be helpful. You know, if, 
you know, I love fantasy titles, so I'm going to say that. And then when I submit this, it's going to submit this request directly to the publisher. They're going to see it on their end, and I'm going to, this is going to change to pending. So now I know that I have requested that title, and I can see it here as an open request. If you hover over the uh, this guy here, you're going to see you know, when it was added and when you requested it, which is a full minute ago, and then see that it's a pending approval. So once a publisher sees that and they approve or decline it, I'm going to see that indicated here. And also, again, on the dashboard, you're going to see it, um, that indicated in your uh, My Edelweiss area here as well. All right, so I'm going to bump back into here. All right, so run strong, stay hungry. I am not a runner. I requested this in another webinar. <laughs> um, but okay, so I, I downloaded this title. I liked it a lot. So now I'm going to write a review of it. And to do that, you simply click right here on review. And from here, you have a couple of options. It can be a very simple thing. You can say, this is, book is awesome. I'm going to give it a 10. And you can save it. And that can be it if you want. Um, obviously, if you're a blogger, reviewer, you're kind of in the business of writing reviews. So you can add your review in this field here. Um, it served its purpose. Um, so again, you can kind of classify this, uh, give it whatever sort of rating you like. If you want to, you can submit this to a publisher. And that, that means it's going to go directly to a publisher. And once you do that, it actually kind of gives the publisher access to your review and allows them to work with your review um, so they can use it for marketing and stuff like that if they want. Um, so just keep that in mind uh, when you're doing these. Uh, but essentially, one of the coolest things that they can do is to take your review and make it a featured review, uh, which means that it's going to be attached to this particular title. And anytime anybody looks at this title in Adavice, they're going to be able to see that there's a featured review and click through and see your review, uh, which is kind of basically it's the publisher saying, uh, we think you should see this. And it's a great review. And it's kind of it's going to help them sell the book, basically, is, is what they're thinking. So keep that in mind. Um, you can also, if you really want to, you can also you know, rate the writing quality. If there's images and stuff like that in there, you can rate those. If they're horrible, you can do that. Uh, so you can um, kind of make this as in-depth as you like. Uh, you can also add themes in here. Right now, themes don't have a, a purpose in Adamice, but we're hoping that once we get enough stuff that we're, we'll be able to add that uh, as a feature, the, you know, searchable and sortable and uh, filterable and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you do want to add a theme in here, um, it'll show on your review, um, but for right now, it's mostly just that. <laughs> uh, with the again, with the hope that it'll be uh, better integrated a little bit later on. So then, when you click save, you know, I just submitted this review to the publisher. So you're gonna think I'm weird, and then you can see, for example, some of the community stuff in here. I can see that um, somebody has added this to a shelf. And I can also see there's some much love given to a title. So whenever you give a, a title review of eight or higher, it automatically gives it much love. So much love is actually kind of a, a leftover sort of thing from um, the old Edelweiss, which people actually really liked a lot. So you can, as you're going through, if you come across a title that you read and you really liked, you don't have to actually go in and write a big review of it. You can just kind of do a flyby review and click on the heart 
I'll show you that here. So the essential oils again, I can just click that and it's going to just bump it into a, a nine review. So you can do that kind of drive by thing. Just keep in mind that that doesn't submit that review to the publisher. And of course it doesn't add any words to your review or anything. But if you do want to edit this, just click in here and you can add elements to it. change my sort here. So that's review stuff. Um, there's also the, the shelf thing, which I did with a, a Ramona Asabel. I don't know how to say her name, so I'm sorry, Ramona. <laughs> um, but if you click on shelf here, you can essentially kind of track your reading. So you can say that you're anticipating or highly anticipating a title. Um, also that you're currently reading, finished reading, or that you didn't finish it. Uh, which is kind of a, a newer um, classification that people were asking for. Uh, which actually brings up a point that a lot of the functionality within Adelweiss comes from you guys. So, you know, people who use the site will email us at support and say, hey, I would love to be able to do this. And if we think it's a great idea and something that a lot of other people would use, then chances are it's going to be a feature eventually. We have kind of a long line of, of things for that to, uh, to work through. But um, yeah, so if you have a great idea, let us know. And especially if it's something that's going to make your lives easier, uh, we like adding those sorts of things in. Uh, so again, with this mirror, mirror, I'm going to add this to highly anticipating. And with cut you down actually finished reading that. It was great. So you can kind of do that on the fly. And then your reviews and shelves are actually, you can see those up here and we're going to um, bump into those in just a minute. Uh, first I wanted to show you again within the sort. Uh, I like within the review copies, you can sort this by review. So, you know, whatever titles have the most reviews will, will pop up in here and it'll sort from highest to lowest. Um, but the shelves are, are actually, I think at this stage of the game are, are even more useful because, you know, a lot of these are brand spanking new and just haven't had any uh, exposure yet. Um, but that being said, when something ha hasn't had that much exposure and there's already a ton of activity around it, that's kind of saying something. It's a kind of a nice way for you to, you know, see what's hot now, what people are really excited about. Um, of course, she's going to be very popular. Uh, there's one community review there and the 41 much loves. So somebody actually wrote a review and then other people uh, just kind of did the flyby much love sort of thing. Um, we can see that there's also a number of shelves that are, this title has been added to as well. Uh, so that can be kind of cool. Just kind of a nice way again to, um, you know, you can filter by a specific genre and then, you know, sort this by, reviews or shelves and just kind of see what's uh, your fellow book professionals are most excited about. It's kind of, kind of cool. So essentially because we do, you know, we offer a uh, platform for publishers to offer digital review copies. Um, and of course we, because we did that, we added the review stuff and then shelves just kind of made sense as well uh, to, for, to allow people to keep track of their reading. Uh, but we've, basically kind of come up with a way to aggregate all that stuff. And that is in the buzz area here. So you have a couple of different, different options in here. You know, right now I'm looking at affiliate activity for the last two weeks. And I can also see my friend activity and honors is going to be like, you know, Pulitzer prize or, you know, PW starred review and, Kirkus and all those guys. So you can see uh, those titles as well. Um, and then your account activity. So if you're actually part of a blogging group who are all affiliated with each other within Adelweiss, you all are all part of under the same organization. You can actually kind of watch what everybody uh, within your organization is reading and reviewing and, and all that kind of stuff, which is a kind of a great way to uh, kind of organize yourselves and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but the affiliate activity is uh, people that you're associated with outside of that, um, which you can do here. So if you click onto your name, 
you get to your profile page and from here you can see um, people associated with your organization, which chances are it's just going to be you if you're a lone wolf blogger. Um, you can see people that you've made friends with and that sort of stuff, but your uh, affiliations will be in here. So you can actually, if you click on the edit here, if you're part of Amazon or the ABA or BNN or Books and Mellon, you can add your um, credentials in here to associate yourselves with them. Um, or if not, and that's great, you can associate yourself with, with the Edelweiss community here. We made it an opt-in sort of things because privacy stuff. So whenever you opt into the Edelweiss community, you're basically saying like you're okay with people seeing your reviews and, and that sort of stuff. So keep that in mind. But it's a really great way to, again, kind of, I guess, essentially crowdsource uh, the front list offerings of the publishers each season and, and see what other book for professionals are excited about. Uh, which I think is kind of a great thing. I get a little elitist um, when it comes to to books. Um, you know, I I put more credence behind people who read professionally than I do f with the general public, which is says a lot about me probably. <laughs> but it's you know I've been in the book business for a while, so. Uh, but you can basically associate yourself with the Edelweiss community, and then your affiliations under the buzz will explode. It'll be very very rich. And we can see that this war cross by Mary or Marie, I don't know, um, is quite popular. So within the last couple of weeks, it's been getting a ton of buzz. You can kind of scroll through there and, and see what people are excited about. So whenever you clock in here to buzz, uh, you can sort of by reviews and shells, or you can sort of by buzz, which is kind of a conglomeration of, of all, all that stuff. So that's the buzz stuff. Uh, as mentioned, there's also a, re a review section here. So these are books I have reviewed recently. Um, and that's, I'm seeing this here because this account is friends with me, uh, with Joe Foster. And to do that, again, if you pop into your profile, you can do a friend search here. Um, so I'm gonna do Lachlan, who's on the line here. Oh, didn't pop up. Maybe I'll do Justin. So Justin is a coworker, has a lot of accounts because he does a lot of testing, but I'm gonna send this particular guy a friend invitation. So it's really that simple. You find them in a list and then you click the send friend invite and then they'll get an email and an indication um, on their end that they have um, a friend request from you and they can say yay or nay. And then once you're connected, you can uh, see all of their review stuff. It's kind of a nice way to, again, with the elitist thing, <laughs> uh, you can get a really nice targeted group of people to who you really trust and whose taste you like, and you know just kind of see, you know, trade off what everybody's reading and excited about in that in that way, which is pretty cool. And of course, you can track your own reviews as well. You can see the few I've done today will pop up in here. So you see the rating that you've given and then any text that you've added to it as well. And you can come in here and edit that here as well. Of course, the shelves, uh, again, it's a way to kind of track your reading. And um, I use it, you know, whenever I come, just kind of randomly come across a title. Um, and within Edelweiss, I'll add it to a shelf. And then I come and check these every now and then and see you know, if there's anything that I can download right away, for example, or um, if, you know, if it's already out, I'll go and buy it, for example. And just kind of a, a good way to track those books that I've stumbled across and definitely don't want to miss out on. And then, of course, 
once I've read it, I add it to my finished reading and I kind of get a list of titles that I read throughout the year, which is pretty cool. Or titles that I couldn't even stomach anymore. <laughs> All right, so as promised, we, um, we're also going to talk a little bit about the community and affiliation. So we've, we've really done that, but I just kind of want to um, make sure that it's, it's clear how to do that. Uh, so really with the buzz, making sure that you are associated with a good uh, you know, affiliation of other users. Again, you just click on your name up at the top, get to your profile, and then under affiliations, you can click through here and you basically select that or unselect it. If you're not associated with any affiliations, you'll see that here. Um, we're always looking to add more affiliations as well. Um, some organizations are easier to work with in that way than others, of course. Uh, but we have over the years, um, you know, there was uh, an awards committee who wanted to have their own affiliation a couple years ago. And so we created one for them. It was just a kind of a one-off sort of thing but all of their users were part of that affiliation. And actually on the other end, on the publisher end, um, that meant that the publishers could very easily, you know, add them to an auto download list. So basically it made them automatically approved for any of their digital review copies and, and stuff like that. So it actually helps out the publishers as well. They, they like to see that stuff. Um, so if you do have something like that uh, that you're a part of, if you email us at support at above the tree line .com, we can, uh, see about doing that. Uh, it can be a very simple sort of thing or it can be quite complicated, which is how some of these other ones are. I do want to mention one last thing is the tags, uh, which I think is kind of one of the um, most underutilized tools on the site. Uh, so for example, if we click onto a title here. I can add a tag to it if I like, which is this guy. And you can make this anything that you want. Um, read this soon, you can add multiple tags. Um, it's kind of whatever sort of thing you want to do to set a title aside in a, because so you're know, like with the the shelves, you're, it's fairly limited on on how you can kind of set titles aside. And people sometimes say, you know, I want to be able to um, create my own shelves and track my reading in that way. But really, that's, that's just a tag. So, you know, when we go to trade shows or um, do, you know, go out to the public and, and, and see our users, we're always asked for other features. And nine times out of ten, that feature that people are looking for is simply a tag. Because anytime you want to... Um, create a separate list of titles. You can do that very, very simply here. And then, of course, once you have titles that are tagged, if you click into the tag section of the site, then you'll be able to see those tags. And again, so if you are associated with other users uh, within your organization, you know, a blog group or a library or a bookstore, uh, you can see your uh, coworkers tags here as well, which can be really helpful. Uh, and then this down here is publishers tags. So uh, this account gets uh, marked up catalogs from publisher sales reps and all that kind of stuff. So that's tags from sales reps there, which are likely not relevant to your use. So yeah, tags are great. Um, I use them all the time, uh, especially in my own personal account. I was going to show a little bit more about the help documents here real quick. So we're just about done. So under get help. Uh, I do want to point out if there are, um, for example, booksellers on the line right now, if you click under booksellers, you're going to see another, a bunch of other webinars listed in here um, for your use. And librarians have the same sort of thing as well, as, as well as sales reps. Um, so Basically, whatever type of user you are, you can click in to each of these and, and get help documentation just for you. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and it's going to be posted in the help documentation here as well. 
Um, but if you're, you know, want more information about tags, for example, you'll find that here. Details about digital review copies, you'll find it there, etc. And as always, if you do want to get in touch with us and have a specific question, uh, support at above the tree line .com is your best bet there. Or if you're in the help documentation here and you're not finding what you want, you can click on contact us and you'll get a little form to fill out that'll go right to our support team who are standing by. But that, that is it for today, you guys. So thank you so much again for, for joining in. And again, if you do have questions, um, just emailing us at support at above the tree line .com will get you helped right away. All right, thanks a lot. Have a great time reading. Bye.